and brings about a consensus in the way in which you want to go. The time is gone when any group of countries could ask another group of countries as to what their policy should be because all of us now have enough national experience of what the danger signals are which we all face. I don't know whether you've read a book by Bill Gates called um, I think Business at the Speed of Thought. He makes a point there that business in the future will have to be like nervous systems. It can no longer be temporarily sequential. You achieve this and then the management problem is faced and you move. He says it has to be an organism. It cannot have the contours of business as you recognized before. You also cannot say that I will respond only to major difficulties and not to minor ones in, in as much as a human organism responds as much to a larger challenge to the organism as to a pain in the toe. It is the whole system which recognizes that there is a problem which has to be overcome in real time, instantly. When we move around in our societies, we somehow we have a software in the mind which presumes that this is being taken care of, that there is a nervous system which allows me to move around, follow my profession, do what I wish, and I don't have to do more than simply have faith in it. In this country, it's an enormous national nervous system which takes care of the life of the individual. If you started unraveling it, you'll find what a mighty network that is. But when we move around in the world, we never seem to ask, how is it that we can also move with reasonable stability and predictability in the world itself? What is that nervous system which is making this possible? This nervous system is represented by a very modest organization which in fact is the central node in the governance of the world today and that is United Nations, its specialized agencies, affiliated organizations, funds and programs, regional bodies, the whole network at a shoestring budget of $1.2 billion a year. When people talk about, uh, you know, bang for the buck, you should look at this institution. Unfortunately, it has a reputation for being sclerotic. Every organism is sclerotic. As I'm speaking to you and you're listening to me, we're becoming sclerotic. Human relationships in the family, in the community, societies, governance, ministries, departments, they are all prone to the same phenomenon. But somehow this impression is created that the United Nations is particularly prone to this illness. We are undergoing a reform process, which, uh, which all processes and organisms should do. But one should not forget, as one moves around the world, that the nervous system of the world of which we are unaware is in fact provided by this institution. As I was driving up to Stony Brook, I had written down some of these. Uh, and uh, you'll be astonished. Uh, I'll go through this list very quickly. Global issues pertaining to all of these issues. Labor is ILO, food and agriculture, FAO, educational, scientific and cultural matters, UNESCO, monetary and budgetary stability, uh, an IDEA, IMF, investment financing, IFC, investment guarantee, MEGA, civil aviation, ICAO, maritime affairs, IMO, telecommunications, ITU, postal, UPU, Meteorology, WMO, and just goes on like that. Intellectual property, WIPO. Agricultural development, IFAD. Industrial development, UNIDO. Atomic energy, IAEA. World trade, WTO. Tourism, WTO. Then there are programs and funds of UNCTAD for development. Both uh, Kamal and I were there. I had the honor to be spokesman for developing countries for a while. Many of the major developments that have taken place in the field of development have, have come from UNCTAD. Drug control, the body UNDCP in Vienna, environment, UNEP, uh, development programs, UNDP, uh, d development fund for women, gender is now the, 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 the mainstream issue, UNIFEM, population fund, UNFPA, refugees, UNHCR, children's fund, UNICEF, world food, and so on. It goes on like that. Other UN entities, functional commissions, and so on. This is what the nervous system is. This also gives you the, uh, the, um, um, the proof of the success of the approach of multilateralism because all of these are virtually universal organizations. And this has been such a quiet achievement 
in the world, it often goes unregarded. There is one um, difficulty here. Just as the magnetic field of the Earth changes every few decades from the north to the south, something very remarkable has happened. In the post-colonial phase, the demanders were the south, developing countries that demanded things from the north. But off late, after the Cold War, the opposite is the demanders have become the north. They say, we want the falling political philosophy from you. We want transparency, participation, institution building, anti-corruption in economic policy. We want free markets, freedom of capital, freedom of this and the other. We want human rights. So all the demands are coming to the south. Formerly, the demands were coming from the south to the north. For a long time, there was a cleft as to where the weight has to be attached. How do we find balance in this? Is it domestic delivery which, is, which has primacy, or is it global international support delivery which has primacy? I feel that after the Monterey Conference, a balance is being reached, which is that neither can succeed without the other. If we talk about delivery domestically and make an issue of it or a fetish of it, we are probably being evasive because we are ignoring our own responsibilities. We are pushing against an open door. The time for polemics and rhetoric is by and large now over. We are not behind sandbags, uh, you know, lobbing artillery shells at each other. But there has to be recognition. There was a very famous debate uh, of what the volume of martial aid should be to Europe. In the end, there were two senators were left having it out. One was for more, the other was for less. These were Senators Vanderbilt and Senator Taft. In the end, one of them turned to the other, I forget which, was, which one it was, and said, Senator, we've been discussing this now for a couple of weeks and expended a lot of energy and time on this. But let me put to you what the dilemma is. The dilemma is this. If a person is drowning in 20 feet of water, it's no use sending 10 feet of rope. That is what the dilemma is. And shortly thereafter, an agreement was reached that this is the minimum reasonable sum. This rope is needed in the world today. And there are people who are holding this rope, basically in the form of resources and technology. There is a view now, gaining ground, uh, that you can have a marriage. It can be a win-win game. It need not be a zero-sum game. It has to be a win-win game. Otherwise, it will become a lose-lose game. And people like Jeffrey Sachs and all have developed, let's say, in the pharmaceutical industry, now they're trying to do in other global public goods like water, task force is being set up on how this marriage can take place. But we are in one world, and uh, this world will suffer irrespective of where the suffering begins. Wolfenstein at the Mexico me meeting said something interesting, which was very different from what he said earlier when people were inviting water cannons on themselves. And he said, these are all professional dissidents. We don't have to take any notice of them. But he said uh, in this meeting, he says, you know, I get the sense when I talk to anybody here that people are beginning to internalize the feeling that trouble anywhere means trouble everywhere. Trouble there means trouble here. And finally, a word is coming into play which used to be very popular in it, uh, which is holistic. It has to, approach has to be holistic. It has to be such as uh, has uh, the advantages of coherence. Uh, there was a discussion going on in the UN, we were talking about debt, and Stanley Fisher, who was number two in IMF, associated with, with at that point of time, is back to the wall after the East Asia collapse. We were discussing debt to least developed countries, and he said, wait a minute, why are we only discussing debt? Why are we not discussing trade access? Because if we give only debt relief, but we do not make available avenues of national wealth in these societies and create them, we will be repeating the same debate 10 years from now. <coughs> because what value have we added to that economy or that society? And Mike Moore, in my view, in this Monterey conference on financing and development, made a very, very interesting presentation. In the hothouse of the World Trade Organization, things become, <coughs> you can and cannot say things, but out of it, Basically, he made a case for G77. He said that world trading activity has to be aligned to development. This is a revolution. In Doha, 
We've had so many.